How are we doing on time, Dad? Okay. Now, guys, let's talk real briefly about steel eaters and stuff. If you get on my boat, you won't see one steel eater. Okay. All my fishing, doesn't matter what it is that I'm doing, is all based off of a finesse presentation. If I can take as much garbage off the front of that thing, whatever it is I'm throwing to make it look more realistic, I do it. You know, when I'm bass fishing, I'll use light line, walleye fishing, light line. You're going to get bit more that way. You throw a big steel eater out there, it's highly visible. If you do it, uh, if we went out and I said, okay, guys, if you want to run your steel eater, it's fine. You'd say, well, Seth, you told us that we're not supposed to run steel eater. And I'd say, yeah, but you're going to throw that spinner bait out there and you're reeling it back as fast as you can. Okay? That's a reaction bite. That thing's going by them so fast, they don't have time to analyze it. They're going to come out and grab it. Boom. If you're standing at a track and a race car goes by, phew, you can hardly see anything but a blur. But if a car goes buzzing by you at 50, well, you can read the name of the car and everything on the side. You can analyze it, correct? Well, it's the same thing with the fish. If you're moving baits through the water at a high rate of speed, line stuff doesn't really matter because it's a reaction when it goes by them. Okay? If I was trolling in open water for walleye, that'd be a different thing because they can come up behind it and swim with it. That thing is going to go by a weed, wood, stump, whatever, and the pike's going to blast out at it. That's how they like to feed. Come out and hit it sideways. I like to run four carbon leaders. 40, 60, 80, or 100. Four carbons got properties that make it when it goes into the water that make it invisible. It's also very dense, which makes it abrasion resistant. Okay? The 100 pound I use when we're burning baits back. The 40 pound I use when we're doing big soft plastic jerk baits, like I can show you over there in the store, where I'm fishing them really slow. Middle of the day, I know those fish are deep, so I'm fishing that, that jerk bait deep and I'm fishing extremely slow. You know, in a soft plastic jerk bait, you put weight in the head to sink it down, unlike a build version. Okay? Slow, slow, tap, move, doink, doink, stop. Whatever your pattern is, but it's slow. It looks like a dying fish. It's easy for them to, to catch. That, they will come in behind and analyze it. Now, the thing you got to know about a pike is it has the keenest eyesight, sees more color hues than any other fish in fresh water. Walleye, he sees better at night, but he lacks yellow-blue receptors in his eyes, so most of what he sees is red and green. Pike sees all hues. I've seen them come up, guys, and it's fascinating because they see better with one eye than they do two. They can see great out here, but when they get up on something because of the bill, they've got a blind spot. If this is a bait, and you'll see them do it with the 12-inch swim baits, that'll be going along with this, and they'll literally be like this. Their eyeball right on it, inches away from it, swimming with it. And what they're doing is they're analyzing it. They're looking at it. That's what makes them so fun, because they're so intelligent. So by going, if you threw that jerk bait out and you were working it down there, slow, with that big steel leader in front of it, they're going to see that leader, and nine times out of ten, they're not going to touch it. So you want to go stealth. Remember I talked about pausing at the hook set? With that 40 pound, all you're worried about is the gill plates when they twist. And that's going to hold up to that. Because if you pause, and they suck it in, and they turn, and it slides out, and it hooks them right in the corner of the mouth, you got no teeth issues there. It's only when they twist and roll. That's one of the reasons for the pausing. So you don't pull the bait away, and so you hook them in the corner of the mouth. So you can get away with that 40 pound. You're not going to break fish off if you're doing it correctly, right? Scenting baits, I usually put scent on everything. Dr. Juice, uh, bass scent, they, they make a pike and muskie. I just use the tournament bass. It, it, stuff all smells the same to me, okay? But I scent my baits down. Reason being is when I'm fishing slow, I like to scent, okay? Because what are they doing? They're analyzing. They're putting all their sensories to that. They're feeling vibrations. They're seeing colorations, and they're starting to smell and taste, when a spinnerbait goes blowing by, it's full reaction. When you fish slow, you want to scent the product. It's one more thing to trigger the strike. Okay. All right, guys, we've got 15 minutes left. We want questions and answers section for you. We're going to ask about anything you want. Braided line? I use braided line. Great question. Here's how I dictate that, guys. Braided line versus monofilament. If I'm power fishing where I throw out and I'm burning the spinnerbait back, or I'm working that hollow belly through the weeds, I like to use braided line if I'm moving the bait fast. Reason being is that it's not so much for the positive hookup, 
It's that when you hit that spinner bait into the weeds, I want to be able to rip it away. And with, my, with braided line having a zero stretch like that, using a medium heavy or a heavy action pull, when you hit those weeds and you pop it, it tears it free and a lot of times that'll, that'll trigger the strike. So you can clear the bait off a lot better that way. When I'm doing the jerk baits, whether it be a build version like a husky jerk or a soft plastic, I use monofilament. Reason being, I use monofilament and I use a slower action rod. Because I don't want to feel the strike that fast because I'm fishing it slow. All I'm going to feel is just a slight tap and when I feel that slight tap, I just reel down real easy and I pull tension and once I feel that tension, I set the hook. If you're fishing slow like that and you feel it too fast with a pike, now if we were walleye fishing, it would be different. I wouldn't have that. But with pike, I like the slower. Because they can hit and spit fast, fast. I mean, you'll have them coming to the boat, guys, and my buddy Chad, you'll have a jerk bait with three trebles on it, and boom, the, th the thunder stick's totally gone, and you go to set the hook, and fly, it's out of there. Well, they clapped down, they came down on it, realized it wasn't real, and it's gone. So what happens with the soft plastic jerk bait, when I'm twitching it, they hit it, and then they feel the softness of it, and they bring it in. And I want to have them, to, I want to give them a second to bring it in. And then I feel the tension, and then I set the hook. So it really has to do with, with how I'm fishing. Yeah, anytime I'm bringing something through the water fast, I use braid. When I'm, with the fluorocarbon leader, yep. And then I use, I like a 20 pound, like a 20 pound Suffix Elite for my main line. You know, the 30 pounder that we caught. I've, I've got that video if you guys would like to see it. I take you through the whole rig and everything over there. But that was using that setup of slow action, 20 pound test, slower rod, so I can get the hook in them, okay? Other questions, guys? What's happened to your show? Do you have some money? And then we'll get back on. Uh, the Spokane market, guys, for the show, just to let you know what's going on. Um, I'm not one of those guys that's going to tell you everything's all great and chipper because it's not. Okay? It's not for most businesses. But the Spokane market for us was just too small. You know, I have Crestliner. Crestliner's still with me. Mercury's still with me. The great folks at Total Marina are still with me. But the amount of money that it takes to be on TV will baffle most. When you guys watched the show, I was paying about $104,000 a year to be on TV. That's what I give to the network. And then what I in turn have to do is they give me 12 commercial spots to sell, depending on the network, sometimes it's 10. And I go out to Crestliner and say, hey guys, I'm great, give me $30,000. Okay, and that's how it works. That's what people don't understand. You think because you're on TV, you see somebody on TV, be it an independent, and all your fishing shows are independent. I don't care if you're in Fisherman or who you are, you're paying for airtime, and then you have to sell that airtime. So this market was just too small for me. So what we have done is we've gone in, and we're, I'm creating a brand for AX Fishing. You'll see the AX Tackle Store out there. We've got the Sidewinder Planer Boards. We just started our subscriber site, and it's been up for about a year, and I've put my heart and soul into it. Because there's so many people here in Spokane that are just diehard people that love the show, they love us, and I want to give back to them and say, hey, look, we have something for you. If you have a high-speed high internet, you can watch it. Dad's filming all these seminars. We'll do 12 of them this week. These seminars will be placed on that subscriber site. The subscriber site, if you have high-speed internet, it's $34.95 a year. There's over 200 videos on there. And you guys know me as a teacher. That's what I like to do. I like to hear success stories, the drop shot thing. I heard some today about going out, catching big fish using it, fishing with the kids. That's what I like to do. I'm not a show host that goes out and goes on some exotic trip somewhere and says, hey, look at all these big fish, and I had you know, the guide catch them for me. That's not me. So through this site, what I've done is I've put episodes on there, but all the instructional DVDs are on there. We did a 15-hour angling academy last year, which was a class like this that covered walleye, bass, trout, uh, the basics, and steelhead. All of those videos are on there. All of these seminars that I do will be on there. $34.95 a year, you get to keep a DVD of your choice, you get 15% off in my tackle store, anything you buy for that year that you're subscribed to it. If you subscribe during the boat show, you get entered into a free trip to go with me. It's a raffle. So it's just a way for me to have stuff out there for my people to stay in contact with me and that I can give back with a discount through the store. You make a few orders during the year and you get 15% off and you've made that $34.95 back. 
Okay. Are you making episodes for other markets? Or? Yeah, what we're doing right now, actually, and I'm waiting to hear from Crestlander, we're looking to go to Fox Sports North. And the fishing out here and the people out here are great, and this is the greatest fishery, in my opinion, anywhere. You know, the guys from Crestliner were back, we were talking to them, and he says, I wish they'd bring me out, we'd go out walleye fishing. Because back there, if they get an eight pounder, that's a toad. You can go out in the wintertime and you can get several eight pounders. You know, you get fish in the teens. If you know what you're doing, it's not uncommon, okay? So we know that we have the greatest fishery, in my opinion, out here. The only thing we don't have is muskies and stripers. Hey, we got big pike. But back there, per capita anglers is so much higher. And that's where things like my planter boards and my DVDs and stuff will sell, which will enable me to be on TV. So I'm having to make that switch. But the subscriber site is there for all the locals that still want to be in touch. And we're still filming shows. We filmed shows all through last year. You know, so it's not like we've gone away. We just, in this age, when you guys go by, you can see it right here. When you go by a boat dealership, how many people just carry Crestliner or just carry StarCraft or whatever it may be. They're multi-line dealerships, just like the automobile industry. If you don't diversify as a business person, you're not going to make it. So that's what we're having to do. And those new shows are on your website. The new shows, yep, we add shows to it. You got 52 on there right now. I've got 20 more in the hopper, and then we'll have, I mean, it just keeps getting added to.